At first glance, it seems somewhat odd that today, as we approach Holy Week, with its commemoration of the end of the life of Jesus, we should be invited to celebrate its beginning. In Mary's acceptance of God's call to be the mother of the Redeemer, she becomes the human instrument of a new and decisive moment in God's plan for our salvation. The angel declares that the child that Mary is to bear will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Today's first reading from the letter to the Hebrews underlines that in Jesus, the eternal Son of God has entered into and made his own a human life with all that such a life entails, including suffering and death. The author of the letter imagines Christ coming into the world and making, reading, reciting the words of Psalm 40, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. See, O God, I have come to do your will. The human life of Jesus, a life lived in perfect faith and obedience, is in all its aspects up to and including his death, a sacrifice. In fact, the perfect sacrifice. It offers God true worship, and in doing so brings about forgiveness and reconciliation. The story of Holy Week is, on a human level, a deeply moving and touching one. It goes from the triumph of Jesus as the meek and humble Messiah entering into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday to his betrayal, denial, abandonment, condemnation, suffering, and death. At first glance, it is a story of evil defeating goodness, of death overcoming life. Easter Sunday, however, makes clear that the reverse of that is in fact true. Far from undermining the expectations awakened by the life and teaching of Jesus, the events of Holy Week reveal their true meaning and proclaim their fulfillment. Today's feast invites us to reflect on the mystery of the person whose suffering, death, and resurrection we will be celebrating with such solemnity next week. He is not simply an outstanding human being, a saint, or a prophet. He is those things, but he is also a great deal more. In him, the God who is in himself unchanging and eternal, and who in ways that we cannot begin to imagine transcends all created reality, becomes so present to, so involved in a human life, that we can say that what Jesus does and suffers belongs to and reveals the very being of God. Paul once summed up the drama of Holy Week by saying that Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. In John's Gospel, Jesus once said, who sees me sees the Father. Meditating on that self-same, self-giving love, John later proclaimed, God is love. A 20th century theologian once wrote a small book entitled, Love Alone is Credible. It alone is able to make sense of Holy Week and therefore of our faith. Suffering and death are not to be glorified in themselves. They are destructive of human life and ordinarily are to be fought against. Jesus embraces them not for themselves, but as an unavoidable part of his life and ministry. He embraces them out of love for us and for the world. By entering into the depths of human life, into what is most dark and frightening in it, he opens even it to God's healing and renewing power. Far from being the last word about human life, suffering and death become, in Christ, a door that opens unto resurrection and new life. 
as the Son of God in human form. Jesus brings God and God's love into every dimension of our lives, including those things that seem to be most at odds with God and with all that is positive. In doing so, he assures us that God's love has no limits, that it reaches into every corner and aspect of reality. Even they can be ways to God and to life in him. In all of this, Jesus reveals himself as the shepherd and guardian of our souls. He goes before us on the path that leads to life in all its fullness. To mark this special feast, let us recite together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs for all of us that our sharing in the Eucharist will draw us ever more deeply into the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. For Canadian soldiers serving in Afghanistan and for the coming of peace and justice to that land, let us pray to the Lord. For families, especially those struggling with challenges at this time, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died recently, especially those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Brother Mingling. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Almighty Father, as we recall the beginning of the church when your Son became man, may we celebrate with joy today the sacrament of your love. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.